Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, Spencer Stewart, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member, along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, the CEO of Diligence Boardroom Resources and the co-founder and editor-at-large of Corporate Board Member Magazine, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to be talking about compensation issues in 2019 from discretion to down cycles. And joining me, who can help guide us through some of these discussions, is Annette Leckie, who's a partner with Meridian Compensation Partners. Welcome, Annette. Thank you, TK. We've had a year of tax reform. We knew that tax reform was going to give us some changes. Um, so what are we seeing in terms of the impact on executive incentives? Well, it's interesting. To date, we haven't seen really big changes just yet. Just as a quick reminder, uh, the impact that tax reform has on executive compensation is that companies can no longer take a tax deduction for pay over a million dollars for certain executives. In the past, they could take a tax deduction for that pay, but only if it was considered performance-based. And there were rules that they had to follow to make sure it was performance-based. Had to be in a, a, a shareholder-approved plan. Uh, they had to set goals at the beginning of the year. And importantly, they had to limit the use of discretion in those plans. So structures that companies put in that were just there to ensure tax deductibility, we've seen those start to fall by the wayside. So companies aren't taking their standalone annual incentive plans to shareholders any longer. That's just not needed. But the underlying incentive structures really haven't changed a whole lot. And if you think about the timing of tax reform, it happened at the very end of last year. Companies were already in the process of getting their plans approved for this year. So there wasn't time for any thoughtful change at that point in time. But now that companies have had time to reflect, we might start to see some changes introduced next year. And one of those changes I think we'll see is an increased use or experimentation with the use of discretion. There's a, a couple of forces I think driving that. One of them is when I talk to committees, they often say, we want to motivate our team to take actions that will move us to the next level of performance. And that's hard to do with your traditional financial goals. Um, another factor, uh, boards are under increasing uh, pressure to incorporate environmental, social, and governance type issues. And those often lend themselves more to discretion or softer objectives. So I think with these forces in play, we might start to see companies experiment with more discretion. You might see modifiers, you might see adjustments made at the end of the year, you might see a carve out 20, 30 percent of the incentive based on these, but I think we'll start to see some shifts. Uh, I can't tell you how happy I am that <laughs> discretion is back because when it was taken completely out mm -hmm. and that meant things like uh, talent development you know, and management and culture and the other things that you mentioned, right. that there was no way to fit that in and we see we see now how important those issues are so to have some kind of factor or adjustment or whatever mm -hmm. on how somebody's doing to me is just makes so much sense so mm -hmm. in that sense I'm I'm sort of happy so knowing that though mm -hmm. I, I don't think it changes the investors perspective because they're still the, the thing that I hear time after time is pay for pay for, for for performance, mm -hmm. and they want those plans to work, right. okay? And so I'm sure that hasn't changed at all. Absolutely. Uh, linking pay and performance is a fundamental principle that's not going to go away. Right. But using discretion and linking pay and performance are not mutually exclusive concepts. In fact, using discretion can actually tighten that link up. If you think about it, you've got um, goals that are set at the beginning of the year. Boards set those goals with the best knowledge they have at that point in time. Then things happen during the year that could render those goals either too hard, too soft, or even irrelevant. So making adjustments at the end of the year can actually tighten up the pay that they receive with what they actually accomplish during the year. Now, that puts tremendous pressure 
on the directors themselves. They've got to have the confidence and the strength of conviction to make those changes. It's really easy to say, well, the numbers are the numbers. We're just going to let the chips fall where they may. But to use informed business judgment and then make a change, an adjustment, or just simply determine a payout without a formula to guide takes a lot more uh, background confidence and conviction that you've got the right strategy. Yeah. The good news is we have seen companies go down this path, so we can learn from what the, the trail that they've blazed before. If you look at large financial services companies, they've historically used a large amount of discretion in setting annual incentives as well as determining the uh, amount of long-term incentives. And so we can take notes from how they have used this process and managed it over time. From my observations, it takes a very strong committee process. You can't just get to the end of the year and then decide what to pay executives. There have to be multiple touch points during the year where management and the board discuss performance. There have to be ground rules. The management team needs to understand what they're going to be held accountable for, how they're going to be measured, and how the committee is going to look at this. There also needs to be a level of trust between management and the board to make those decisions. And obviously management needs to give them the tools they need to make those decisions. And I guess probably most importantly, at the end of the year, the committee and the, comp the company need to do a, a robust job of explaining that all in the proxy. They need to outline the process, they need to link it to their strategy, and then explain how and why they made the decisions that they did. And I think if you look at some of the longest CDNAs that are out there today, they belong to financial services companies. Sometimes you have to spill some ink to describe this, this process. Yeah, well, the, you know, the, the better you are at summarizing that and getting your point across, the more people that have a chance to read it because those CDNAs and those proxies <laughs> are getting awful big. So mm -hmm. this is a, when you talk about the courage, uh, this is a great segue into sort of uh, uh, an issue that's worth discussing, and that's um, sort of, you know, we're, we've had this up cycle for how long? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so you know, or you should know that, you know, we're going to be going through uh, peaks and valleys. Um, certainly history has showed us that. Um, and it creates an interesting dilemma for uh, compensation committees, because Let's just take the example that mm -hmm. TSR and, and financials are down because we're in a down cycle, uh, which right. may, we may be coming up to at some <laughs> point. Um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that management hasn't done a terrific job, okay? Right. And yet, um, if a board goes ahead and rewards management during a downtime for financial stock price, you know, mm -hmm. TSR, pretty sure they're going to get flagged and at least <laughs> have some unpleasant discussion, you know, with investors, yet mm -hmm. it makes sense. And when you look at that and you flip that the other way, you know, sometimes management's performance rises with the tide. They've really done nothing special, mm -hmm. okay, but because all the variables you know, TSR and the bottom line and stock price are all up, Right. they get rewarded for what could have been a rather lackluster performance. So, you know, this is always, I, I've always argued on this point because I, I ask boards to have the courage, you know, mm -hmm. to do it and explain, but what's your experience with that? And, you know, I know that I know that companies sometimes just bite it and say, "Okay, they'll be rewarded on one end because we're not going to we're not going to take the chance." <laughs> It'll average out. Yeah, but what's your experience with that? And do you see mm -hmm. anything on that changing? Um, I have seen it, I and mean, the situation you describe, where management's done everything that they've been asked to do, they've met the objectives, but yet shareholder returns are down. Maybe even financials industry, are still down. The industry could be tanking, down. Yeah. Um, those are the situations where I believe that boards really earn their pay and they run the risk of being second-guessed, obviously, on the, on the back end. Right. Um, but it, the way I look at it is shareholder returns in particular are an output measure. And they will often lag certain financial results, they will often lag certain strategic actions that a company will take. Uh, so there's timing issues, especially when you're talking annual incentives. 
Now that doesn't mean we can just ignore it because that is certainly a barometer that investors will use. Uh, and I'm not an advocate for saying that shareholder return should drive annual incentives, but at the same time, a 200% payout because management did all these wonderful objectives when shareholders are losing money and relative performance is bottom quartile, that's a really tough sell, especially if you're gonna apply any sort of discretion to that. Right. Now, on the flip side, Management's done everything you asked them to do. They might have even exceeded everything you asked them to do. And the board has to keep them motivated to continue on this trajectory that they've set and laid out for the company. So they will have to balance these two sometimes competing objectives. Um, it, it takes confidence that you've got the right strategy to move forward in that situation. But what I have seen some companies do is to go a little lighter than you might on the annual incentive or the cash component of compensation. Keep it at target, maybe even below target, in recognition that we haven't seen the proof of the pudding here. We haven't seen the financial results manifest just yet. Uh, on the other hand, go long and heavier on long-term incentives. And if you do have the right strategy, this will turn around and the stock price will rebound. And because of the leverage in the long term, that's really where the executives are going to make more money, more than they would have in upfront cash. So if you have the strength and conviction that this is right, go short on the cash, go long on long-term incentives, and you will have rewarded management fully for that effort. Yeah. And then the second piece of that is you've got to explain that in the proxy. And the other piece that I think sometimes companies take for granted is taking those decisions and linking that back to their strategy. With all the enhancements that we've seen in CDNAs, I still hear investors say, you haven't made the link to strategy for me. And so I think being very explicit about how these actions link back to the strategy will help support their decisions. And then the last thing that can also, it's also part of disclosure, if shareholder results are down, stock price is down, chances are the executive is also feeling that. A large part of executives' wealth is often tied up in unvested or in-cycle long-term incentives. And so putting more information in the proxy around how those are tracking can convince investors that your overall structure is linking pay with performance because the awards that these executives have received are also down, just like their investments. Now that's not something that's required, so not very many companies do that. But I have seen that be very successful in convincing investors that overall the company is linking pay with performance. Yeah. So when I was on a public board, um, I was always nervous about how much I wanted to discuss about strategy only because mm. I didn't want to give competition any, <laughs> you know, um, sort of preferential information about where and when I was going to something. But over the years, you know, there's a way to, you know, keep it at the 30,000 foot level right. and not really give that. So, you know, I think that maybe for our viewers uh, that sit on a comp committee, I think your recommendation about how to handle that is excellent. Um, the other thing I would say is uh, on the part that is short term or that you feel that you have to reward an executive, you know, Common sense is good. You know, <laughs> it makes sure it looks, you know, reasonable. Right. Um, and then, the final thing that we that you've echoed a couple times is you really need to be a good communicator about what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, not only, probably most importantly in the proxy, mm -hmm. but remember, um, investors if they do ask you, they don't want to hear about pay from the CEO. They Absolutely. don't want them no. talking about it. So that <laughs> right. means that the comp committee chair or at least a member is going to have to you know have that important meeting with the uh, mm -hmm. investor and the more they have conviction about this is what we're doing and this is what we feel happen i think offers some comfort to any investor that's they are just making sure that that these issues have been thought through by the company and by the board mm -hmm. Annette, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us. My pleasure. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, 
Center for Audit Quality, Spencer Stewart, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member, along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.